When using a database such as Academic Search Premier, keep in mind that they will not work the same way as Google. For instance, typing, are there any peer-reviewed articles about how handwashing impacts the spread of germs, won't yield many results. This is because Academic Search Premier is not designed to use natural language. It is best used when your research topic is broken down into keywords. For this search, I might use the keywords handwashing and germs. The more keywords we enter, the more specific our search will be, and the fewer results will be displayed. If you get back fewer results than you were hoping, check to see if any of the keywords can be removed in order to broaden the search. It's usually recommended to start broad and then narrow down to a topic. Right now, we're on the advanced search page of Academic Search Premier, which offers three windows for entering search terms. If we scroll down, we can see that there are a number of ways that we can also limit our search, but these also appear on the results page, so let's skip these for now. I'm going to enter my search terms one per window. Once I've clicked search, we're taken to a results page where I'm a little surprised to see that we only have 132 results. I expected more. Is it possible that there just hasn't been much written about my topic? Or is it more likely that my search terms aren't finding the right results? To find out, I'm going to take a look at the keyword germs. There are many ways this idea can be expressed. So what happens if I change germs to germs or bacteria? This will allow us to search for both of these terms at the same time. And now our results have been nearly quadrupled. Getting back a large number of results shouldn't give anyone anxiety. The object isn't to pick a few of a large number of results, but rather to whittle them down to a manageable number. Now we can do this using the limiters on the left side of the page. We can begin with the obvious ones. I know that I need an article which is peer-reviewed, so I can select the checkbox next to peer-reviewed journals to include only those in my results. I might also consider the publication dates. If I know that my sources need to be less than five years old, I can use the publication date slider. This drops our results down to 105. From here, we might want to take a look at the subjects being reflected within these results. We can do this by scrolling down to the subject limiter on the left and expanding that menu. Other options to narrow these down might include source type, publication, and language. One more thing to keep an eye on are the actual individual entries. Each one of these contain a lot of information that can be useful, including the authors, name of the journal in which the article was published, and the number of pages. It also features the subjects, which can be very informative and also used as future keywords. If we click on the article title, we can be taken to another page, which features even more information, including the article's abstract.